At first glance, drive shafts and their operation seems pretty simple. I mean, they just transmit torque from the gearbox to the wheels, right? Unfortunately, it's not quite that easy. The complexities that vehicle manufacturers must overcome to get that torque to the wheels in a reliable, vibration-free package means that numerous types of systems are used. The purpose of a drive shaft in a light vehicle is to transmit torque from the transmission to the final drive, or in the case of a transaxle, directly to the wheels. In order to do this, the drive shaft must be able to work through varying angles and alter its overall length to accommodate movement in the suspension. Not all drive shafts are constructed the same. The components that allow for a change in drive angle will differ to some degree when comparing a front drive transaxle to a vehicle utilising a live rear final drive. Tail or propeller shafts are used in rear wheel, four wheel and all wheel drive vehicles and are located between the transmission and the final drive assembly. Propeller shafts may be constructed from steel, aluminium alloy or in some cases a carbon fibre composite. Weight is minimised by constructing them in a tubular shape so that strength is not compromised. A universal joint is used at either end of the shaft to allow torque to be transferred through two or more angles. Some shafts are even fitted with a spline slip joint to permit change in length with suspension travel. Not all tail shafts are fitted with mechanical joints. Vehicles designed with independent rear suspension use a rubber coupling mounted at one or both ends. Because there is very little to no angle change between the final drive and transmission in these vehicles, the tail shaft remains relatively straight. With no angle change, a universal joint is not required. The rubber coupling allows for very small movements in the vehicle chassis or body while absorbing driveline vibrations. Universal joints allow the propeller shaft to drive through an angle. The most common type we will need to repair or replace is the cardan joint. This universal joint is constructed as a cross and yoke design. The cross or trunnion acts as the inner support for the needle roller bearings while the yoke holds the bearing caps. Each bearing cap is sealed to prevent contaminants from damaging the rollers and prevent any leakage of lubricating grease. Some universal joints are maintenance free, meaning that the joint is sealed for its service life. Others are fitted with a grease nipple for the purpose of lubrication during inspection. Universal joints are strong and robust. However, they are subject to two major limiting factors, maximum working angle and velocity fluctuations. As you can see in this table, the maximum working angle of a universal joint will decrease as the rotational speed of the shaft increases. The maximum working angle of the tail shaft is determined by the vehicle's suspension design, with mechanical interference between the yoke and shaft limiting the maximum achievable angle. Did you know that during operation, angled universal joints rotational speed will change four times each revolution? We call this phenomenon velocity fluctuations. When a universal joint transmits driving torque through an angle, the output shaft does not rotate through 360 degrees at a constant speed. In fact, its speed varies with every 90 degrees of rotation. If we follow the path of a bearing cap from the nine o'clock position through 90 degrees, the cap must travel a long distance in a short time frame. So it tends to initially accelerate through this angle of rotation. As the bearing cap passes 12 o'clock, its velocity has peaked. It begins to decelerate to the three o'clock position. Because of the angle of the universal joint, the bearing cap has a shorter distance to travel to get to the six o'clock position. But it has the same amount of time to get there, so it tends to decelerate through this angle. Again, the cap's velocity has slowed through this rotational angle. The bearing cap continues to rotate back towards nine o'clock and begins to accelerate again due to the greater joint angle and therefore the greater distance it must travel. What we have just seen are velocity fluctuations of the joint. If left uncontrolled, this would cause extreme vibration throughout the vehicle. We can overcome velocity fluctuations through phasing, 
which refers to the process of synchronising the universal joints at either end of the drive shaft so that the velocity fluctuations produced cancel each other out. In other words, we position the two universal joints so that as one speeds up, the other slows down. When a vehicle suspension compresses or rebounds, the tail shaft must follow the same movement as the final drive assembly. The distance between the transmission output shaft and the final drive assembly will change proportional to the arc that the final drive follows. The tail shaft is designed to compensate for this movement using a slip joint. Vehicles with limited suspension travel use an extended yoke which is splined to the transmission output shaft. As the suspension moves and the tail shaft follows, the slip yoke will slide into and out of the extension housing. Vehicles with longer suspension travel are fitted with a slip joint positioned in the tail shaft itself. This joint performs the same function as a slip yoke. It's not uncommon for long wheelbase rear wheel drive vehicles to be fitted with a centre bearing, which effectively turns one long shaft into two shorter ones. The centre bearing is a sealed ball race mounted in a thick rubber casing, which is then bolted to the chassis or underbody of the vehicle. Manufacturers do this to minimise driveline vibrations caused by the high rotational speeds of the tail shaft, but that's not all they do. Unlike the propeller shaft, drive shafts are manufactured as a solid unit and are used in vehicles fitted with independent front or rear suspension. They are often called axle shafts or half shafts due to their construction. Constant velocity joints are fitted to drive shafts because of their capability for larger working angles and the absence of velocity fluctuations. CV joints are perfect for front wheel drive vehicles as the larger working angles allow for improved steering ability. Their location in relation to the final drive or wheel hub is how they are recognised and are commonly referred to as either an inboard or outboard joint. An outboard joint, known as a fixed ball or Rezepa joint, contains six ball bearings fitted between the inner and outer housing and are held in place by a cage. Machine grooves or tracks in the inner race and outer housing allows the bearings to slide. This construction permits flexing of the housing during operation. The joint is lubricated with lithium-based grease containing molybdenum disulfide and graphite. A flexible rubber boot keeps the lubricant in and contaminants out. Regardless of the joint's operational angle, the input and output speed is always the same, hence the name constant velocity joint. Inner CV joints are a little different from the outer ones as they only need to allow for suspension travel and not changing steering angles. We call these joints plunging ball types because they are designed firstly as a slip joint and can be further classified as a double offset, cross groove style or a plunging tripod. Double offset joints have retained the same components as a Rezepa joint with the addition of a deeper straight grooved outer housing which allows for the change in the drive shaft length during suspension travel. A cross groove CV joint is a flatter design with angled grooves machined into the outer housing. The inner race and outer housing share the plunging motion, thereby reducing the overall depth of the CV. Cross groove joints are also used by some manufacturers as the outer on IRS drive lines. Tripod plunging joints are constructed with a central drive, referred to as the tripod or spider. Mounted to the three trunnions are spherical rollers operating on needle bearings. The rollers slide in machine tracks in the matching outer housing. Again, just like an outer CV, a rubber boot is fitted to keep the grease in and the contaminants out. Do you still think that drive shafts are a simple component? Understanding the complexities of driveline systems and their operations will not only make you a better tech, but it will help you diagnose and repair faults in this area.